boy, there's a lot of misconceptions about schizophrenia. I mean, a lot of my patients do have hallucinations and they do have delusions, but also a lot of them have what we call the negative symptoms of schizophrenia. So we talk about negative and positive symptoms. The positive is not because they're good, but it's uh, beyond what we would consider normal, such as hallucinations and delusions, suspiciousness, persecution, all of that. And then the negative symptoms are the absence of what we would consider normal. So it's the lack of relations with people, it's the lack of affect, um, the lack of ability to connect. And so um, a lot of people, they only think about the positive symptoms, but the negative symptoms are really incredibly devastating for patients and their families. Um, the other thing is the suicide rate in schizophrenia is quite high. People don't realize that this is a deadly illness. About 10% of individuals individuals with schizophrenia will kill themselves within the first five years of diagnosis. So it's really something that we need to take seriously and I think doctors need to be looking for that when they're when they're treating these patients. Particularly in clinical trials, the FDA has required now that we do suicide assessment at every visit with a, with a subject. Um, we're also seeing that translating to some of the, the real world. So for example, at my hospital, we do do a, a formal suicide assessment, the Columbia Suicide uh, Assessment Rating Scale, at every admission and discharge of a subject. And I know other hospitals are doing that as well. You know, apart from some of the medications, I, I was just at the Schizophrenia International Research Society meeting in Florence, Italy, and you know, one of the, there's a lot of talk about genetics, and so um, I think that that's kind of one of the areas that we're moving into, although we've been looking at genetics for a long time and we're still kind of hoping for the breakthroughs. But the, the other interesting thing I think that we're seeing is some of the um, apps that are being developed for schizophrenia, which, you know, you think about schizophrenia and you don't normally think of your, your patients on a smartphone and, and using some of these apps, but some of the apps that are, that are coming out are actually pretty cool. They're gonna not only help patients to um, maybe think more clearly, but there's cognitive behavior therapy apps and things like that, that, that once a patient is stabilized on their medication, such as a, a long-acting injectable, then you can start to work on the other things in their lives, such as their relationships with people and getting them engaged and activities so I think you know the medications are certainly exciting and and I've watched I've been an investigator for the last 26 years I've seen all of the atypicals um, from early development through late development and approval um, and so I do find them exciting but I think that some of these other things the technology and using that with schizophrenia is really going to be the wave of the future